makeup wipe is pretty much never unless you are tipsy and you don't have the energy to make it hello you guys how are you i hope you're keeping well and keeping healthy and taking your vitamin d3 so welcome to my channel joni loves my name is joni please hit that subscribe button and that bell that would be so cool now i'm really excited because today i'm going to chat you through the go to bed with Dr. Shireen Idris, a New York dermatologist, and what she does going to bed with her skincare routine. <laughs> and you know, I always think self care is the most important thing. So it's always good to see what other people are doing. And I hope that you can learn a little bit and me learn from this some tips that might help you get that glow going on. So Dr. Shireen Idris is a New York dermatologist with 225,000 followers on Instagram. Cool, cool lady. And she's got, I believe, is it YouTube 34,000 followers. I wish that was me. I'll get there soon. <laughs> so it's really interesting to see what she's going to do. And for those of you that don't know who I am, and this is your first time to my channel, I am a Scottish skin guru. I bet you couldn't tell that from the accent. So what does that mean? It means that I am what you would call an esthetician who has been treating skin for over 30 years and still am. So I've worked with many brands and I know quite a bit about ingredients and doing that for over the 30 years and still doing it, still treating people's skin and doing lots of skin consultations has given me this knowledge of what is the bullshit ingredients that's out there you know and the marketing that's behind some of the brands so let's not go there just now but also i do teach therapists beauty therapists in uk and ireland how to look after their client's skin which i love doing and i'm just passionate really about educating everyone and how to have a healthy skin and a healthy body i am so let's get started with dr shireen and see how it goes I guess I have to take this off to walk you guys through my nighttime skin routine. Hey guys, I am Dr. Shireen Idris, a cosmetic dermatologist, and I got my fancy new PJs on. And I'm gonna walk you through my nighttime skincare routine. So why don't you grab your toothbrush so we can go to bed together? Because if you don't brush your teeth, I'm not going to bed with you. After I brush my teeth, and this is just a little tip, if you guys um, are into brightening your teeth or whitening them, I would say use a white strip. I don't use it for the full 30 minutes that it tells you to because I have sensitive teeth. But even if you get five minutes every day, it's better than nothing. That's my MO in life when it comes to whitening your teeth, to working out, to doing pretty much anything. Five minutes is better than none. So I actually, for the most part, only brighten the top ones because my lower teeth are very sensitive. I am not wearing as much makeup as I used to wear. I'm going to stop there just now because I want to tell you, I love teeth whitening st strips. I do. And I've got to tell you, the ones I quite like now, I do like the Crest white strips and I would tell you, try them. Mm -hmm. I always bring them back from America, but the ones I'm really loving now, I get them in CVS Pharmacy. You must be able to get them online but they dissolve so you put them on and I have used them today <laughs> and I like to use them a few times a week I do so I put the strip on just as she's done there on top and on the bottom I do I do and I leave them on and they dissolve in your mouth now some of you might be going oh that sounds horrible Joan but it's not it actually is okay and I think I love them because I too have got very sensitive teeth. Uh -huh. I've had it done at the dentist. I don't know if you've done that yourself yet, but it was very sensitive. I really got the Sensodyne toothpaste going on every night. So try the CVS um, self-dissolving strips. I think they're really quite easy. Mm -hmm. But I love this. So right away, Shireen, I'm with you there, girl. I am with you there. Because of the whole mask situation. But I do wear sunscreen every day. I draw in my brows. These are illusions. They're not real. And I wear mascara and a little bit of under eye concealer. So that being said, I always start off by taking off my makeup, followed by a cleanser. Now, if I'm only wearing sunscreen and no makeup, I actually skip the bioderma part 
and I just cleanse twice and I'll show you guys what I use but I soak up a cotton pad and I start with my eyebrows which always make me sad because they really do frame the face can you guys please get rid of the makeup wipes the only time you should ever use a makeup wipe is pretty much never unless you are tipsy and <laughs> You don't have the energy to make it to a bathroom. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Just stop, just stop there. A wee minute, a wee minute. I'm going to say this about um, she was too rough there on her eye skin, okay? And um, I'm looking at that Biodem Sensible Water. It's a micellar water that she's using. It's not cruelty free. Joni doesn't like that. No. Um, it's alcohol free, fragrance free, essential oil free, but it's not cruelty free. Mm -hmm. but it's got cucumber fruit extract which is soothing anti-inflammatory so that's okay for the eyes but here's the thing easy way to do it get you know to take off the makeup and the eye makeup and the lippy get six cotton pads okay and soak them in and it's the only time i'm going to say soak them in cold water okay and rinse them so they're almost dry and then literally put the micellar water if you're going to use that Personally, I think it's rubbish, but you know, it's very popular. So look, each to their own, right? Put it on your cotton pads, okay? And then don't rub the eye, okay? So you've got the pad and it's pretty soaked with the cleanser on it, the makeup cleanser, and then tap it, hold it against the eye area and tap it. Now, this is a trick. If, well, watch what you're doing here, Joan. If the trick, the trick is that if it was good at removing makeup, most of the makeup after holding onto the eye area for a number of, you know, seconds, when you take it away, oh, this is this here, it's this is here, um, it will absolutely be saturated in the makeup. Okay, one eye per, one pad per eye, and then use the other four to take off the makeup. But don't need to rub your eyes. What you can do is fold it up and go under. I don't like you going like that with your eye, which she's doing as well. Okay, so it's under towards the nose, over the top, if you're going to do that. But hold the pad on and that will dissolve most of the makeup. It will without the need to rub. You know, it's too thin the skin here. Please get into this habit. It's maybe okay. I don't know what age Shireen is. But when, you know, you get to my age, you do not want to stretch that skin. So I'm just pointing that one out. Okie dokie. Maybe keep an extra stash as an emergency next to your bed. Or if you are on a plane and you really want to get rid of the makeup so it's not sitting on your face or your eyes. But it's not really getting rid of it, just FYI. It's just smushing it around. So now that I've gotten rid of... But I'm going to give her a round of applause. She's mentioned the... the face makeup wipes the makeup wipes are banned from your household uh-huh she's saying that it's okay if you've had a couple of drinky poos uh-huh yeah if you want to have a, a little and then you're feeling like that going to bed and having a pack beside your bed i would say no self-control self-control maybe before you get to the bit like that go and take the makeup off <laughs> but i don't like face face wipes at all makeup wipes they are not good and they sensitize your skin so i'm going to say shireen don't encourage don't encourage us no no don't use it get even if you've got to have the micellar water is that better than face wipes yes <laughs> they'd have said it my eyebrows and my eyelashes and you guys can see the under eye bags from my toddlers that I have. I like this one by Vanny Cream. It is the cheapest, most gentle cleanser you can find. Now, when I use only sunscreen and no makeup, I will wash my face, like I said, twice in order to get all of that sunscreen off. And I use lukewarm water, nothing too hot at all. And you don't have to keep the product in your hand like all these people think you do. Just get it on your face. And the true test comes when I dry my face. See if anything is left behind. So now that I've made a watery mess, let's see. <laughs> oh, I had my eyelashes still. So I will probably just go back, clean that off. But there's really not much on my face at this point. Once we take our makeup off. All right, so Good thing is she said double cleanse. I like that very much. I did. The Vanny Cream Gentle Facial Cleanser. 
it's nothing special, no. It's, you know, it's okay. It's not a treatment type cleanser. It's not get glycolic acid in it or anything like that. So it is free of fragrance, which is always a plus for me and free of parabens, but it's nothing special. That's why it's cheap. <laughs> I'm just saying that's why it's cheap. Uh huh. And I think it's funny how her lashes came off in the, so there you go. Mm -hmm. Take the lashes off first, Shireen. Take the lashes off first. But I do, I can see her skin when I'm looking at this and her skin, um, it's obviously her heritage, but she definitely suffers from pigmentation. You can, you can kind of see that now that she's, she's cleansed her skin. But double cleanse, that's, that's, that's it. That's the way to go. And we've washed our face. We exfoliate. However, listen to me and listen to me well, okay? Turn off the music. You guys are way over exfoliating. I don't know who's discovered that this is like the best thing since sliced bread by telling you guys to exfoliate like 20 times a day. But I have a lot of patients coming in with really red inflamed skin and their um, skin barrier is completely disrupted. And so if you're gonna exfoliate, less is more, two to maybe four-ish times a week, depending on the type of exfoliation that you're using and the acids that you're using, but I'm going to show you guys today a lighter version of exfoliating because I'm going to use a prescription strength retinoid. Do not do this yourselves at home if you are not somebody who's used to using retinoids because it will make your skin extremely inflamed and irritated. So stick to the acids on one night and to the retinols or retinoids on the other night unless you are a seasoned retinoid user and then you can kind of mix them together and you know your skin. So this is not for beginners, but I'm going to show you guys a beginner's exfoliation. And it is this one by L'Oreal, the Revitalift 10% glycolic acid. I hate that it comes in a dropper. No, I didn't design the packaging. Okay, so we'll just touch a little bit on prescription retinoic acid. The prescription one that she's, well, she's a dermatologist. She doesn't need to get a prescription. She's probably got some in her bag. <laughs> anyway, um, I do think, and I have tried prescription um, retinoic acid and it really dried my skin out massively. And that's really what you've got to know, okay? It depends how thickened your skin is, um, a lot of different factors, but you have to be careful because it definitely can compromise your skin barrier, which is your shield. I'm always talking about this to you. But you really have to be careful. I can understand why she would like it and I think definitely it's got something to do with this pigmentation that you can see in her skin colouring. Mm -hmm. I think she's Lebanese um, heritage so I think this is maybe where the skin colourings come from. She's, I mean she is gorgeous, she's got fabulous features but she, I think she's definitely concerned about her pigmentation and that's why she's using prescription um, retinoic acid but be careful about that please if you are thinking about it you really need to go and see a dermatologist and really speak to them about it and see if your skin can take it and really being extremely careful I've seen people that have used it and it can really sensitize the skin so be warned be warned always speak to someone first about it a good dermatologist will tell you the truth but I do love the playtime that this product has. A little bit goes a long way. And when you are exfoliating, I'll tell you from here to your tatas, okay? Because this is a unit. You may not see it in your teens. You may not notice it in your 20s. You might kind of believe me in your 30s, but by the time you hit your 40s, you will thank me for taking care of the skin next to your tatas. Because if you wear a shirt, you wanna make sure that it's a unit and that you know it matches. So that is how I exfoliate. And did you guys just see how much coverage I got from that glycolic acid? I like it because it's 10%. I also like glycolic acid because it helps with pigmentation. And that is one of my biggest issues. Now, once a week or so, I will not give up on my tried and true biology recherche. Do not use if you're pregnant or attempting to get pregnant or breastfeeding. Wow. So a couple of good things there. I do like her saying that you go down to your tatas. I call it the nips. Uh -huh. I call it, go down to your nip nips, go down there and treat it all as one. You have to, and you're, you know, what she said is right in your 20s, you're thinking, oh, really? Um, and then your 30s, you're starting to think, maybe, yes, definitely. <laughs> and then 40s, it's, come on, just, just get it down there, just get it down there, girl. Anyway, you have to look after the girls, okay? You have to. And really coming down here and treating all as one, my goodness. 
I am so glad you said that. I'm forever telling people. I mean, it's why I'm against spraying perfume on your skin. Aha, uh -huh, too, because it really aggravates the skin here. And I have seen lots of people who have got damaged skin, discoloration because of perfume. I won't go into that one now, but I've got a video you can watch up here. Okay. So what can I say about this? Um, she's using this L'Oreal Revitalift 10% Glycolic Acid. Um, it's not cruelty free. L'Oreal's not cruelty free. That's why I don't like them. Uh -huh. That's why I don't like them. But 10% glycolic acid. I do love glycolic acid. It's an amazing um, ingredient. It really is. It does a number of things. But got to think of your skin as, um, think of it, the outside layer of your skin has got dead skin cells. Think of that brick in the wall where all the bricks and they're getting held together with this mortar and there is a you know a thick wall with so many bricks on it and really what the glycolic does is breaks the mortar up to let the bricks come off so think about that your dead skin's flaking off and the glycolic acid is doing that okay but not just that glycolic acid has got a very small molecular size that travels right through this outer layer of skin the epidermis and it helps to stimulate collagen mm -hmm. so it's, it's a really fantastic thing and it's been clinically proven. You can Google that. So glycolic acid serum, I do like it. I think it's a, a this is a good, an inexpensive way for you to try glycolic um, in a serum. I do like it. The only one thing about this is, which is two things, two things that's annoying me here. It's got glycolic acid, glycerine, fabulous, um, humectant, love it. Um, and it's got, denatured alcohol that's sensitizing that's a bad drying alcohol and i've done this and i've talked about this before but it really isn't great and it can aggravate some people with sensitive skin so although this is not and it's an inexpensive i think 24 quid for an ounce of this serum i think that's all i'm okay i have really good price i have to say but these two things really tell me do not people with sensitive skin beware of this Sodium hydroxide is a cleansing agent which is highly alkaline and I have told you this before but your skin really needs to be this protective barrier acidic okay so skin's got an acidic pH of five and a half okay 5.5 and this one is over the neutral it's highly alkaline so I don't know that this is great but it's got Sodium hyaluronic, you know, hyaluronic acid, so I quite like it. It's got, it looks like vitamin C's in this and aloe, you know, there's a, it, it, the good ingredients outweigh the bad ingredients, but still, if you get sensitive skin, test patch first and see how you get on. I like that test patch idea, I do. Um, you can use glycolic acid. So I had to give up on the um, Eurogique for a while when I had my babies. So, I've exfoliated, I am nice and dewier now, and after I exfoliate, this is where you enter the toners and serums. I'm not a huge toner fan, however, for your purposes today, and because- uh, I'm gonna chat about that Biologique Recherche Lotion. Um, it's, it says it's not tested in animals, but it's sold in China. Um, 69 pound for this. I'm not really familiar with Biologique Recherche Lotion. I haven't tried it. P Fifty V nineteen seventy. Again, there's a couple of things in this. First of all, this one that she's using, you can't get it in Europe um, because of the ingredient phenol, and phenol is banned in the EU in personal care products. I have to tell you that first of all, but it's allowed in the US. Okay, it's a chemical exfoliant, but she said there and she mentioned you can't use it if you're pregnant or breastfeeding and that's because of the potential potential side effects that using uh, a topically applied product with phenyl in it can have um so I, that always you know a red flag to me okay should you be using this because you know it's got this phenyl in it and it's been banned in europe mm. But some people that will be like, oh, wow, that sounds amazing. <laughs> you know how some people are like that where you think, it's been banned, it must be good. <laughs> Why do people think like that? <laughs> you know? Anyway, it's got glycerine, humectant, lactic acid, which I do love. Okay, another helps helps to the skin renew. Niacinamide vitamin B3, a superstar ingredient, and salicylic acid. Um, but this fennel thing, okay. You know, 
I sometimes, I'm sure you do too, whenever it comes to this time of year, you can get a sore throat. And I have used in the past chloroseptic, the throat spray. That's got fennel in it. This is the ingredient fennel that numbs um, the throat when you put when you use that. Uh -huh, it's a number. It's used as, a, as a, an analgesic type of thing, an oral anesthetic, right? But if it's doing that to your throat, what is that doing to your face? Mm -hmm. Is It might not allow you to realise that it's sensitising your skin. Who knows? Again, I am going to say to you, I think that Shireen's got the kind of skin that can handle it. Obviously, she knows. She's a dermatologist. She obviously knows her skin very, very well. And that's how she can get away with it. But again, be careful on, you know, looking at ingredients and, you know, do your research first and check about it. Is it, is it right one for you? If you've got a sensitive or dry skin or a thin skin, I would steer absolutely clear of that Biologique Recherche Lotion P50V1970. I would steer clear of it uh -huh, because it's going to affect this, your protective barrier badly. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, you got it. I'll stop the nagging and get on now. Because I'm originally Lebanese, I want to show you guys this rose water that I bought from the local ethnic store. First of all, it's 10 ounces and I bought it from an ethnic store in New York City, so it's $4.99. But in the suburbs, I bet you this is $2.75 and if I were on the prices right, I bet you I would win. So rose water is a personal fave. I guess I learned this from my grandmother, not to sound cliche, but I really did. And the reason I like it is because with the mask usage, I have rosacea. It gets really red and inflamed around here and so at night I just dab a little bit of rose water kind of in the areas that the mask hits where I have the most redness that's the cotton pad and inflammation. Wow I'm, I'm going to talk about this mask night okay and I've done a video about this because this is a real thing mask night okay with wearing the mask and I'm sure some of you watching this will ha have had it or got it right now because this is not going away, this mask stuff, is it? So have a look at this video here when I've talked about it. Um, but maskne definitely, apart from causing acne, it's definitely flaring up people with rosacea, which she said it is with her. And also um, if you've got eczema, it's, it's all flaring up. I'm constantly getting email after email and message, message about this right now. So, you know, you've got to watch that when you're, Wearing the mask, you really need to cleanse your skin. Don't wear makeup underneath it. No, don't. Please don't wear makeup underneath the mask. Um, and let's. I, I like this rose water idea because rose water is anti-inflammatory. I do not think a toner is skincare. It's a waste of money. But in this case, I, I'm quite liking this idea. I am. I'm liking this idea of the Cortez rose water. It sounds nice. It does. Mm-hmm. So that's sort of what I do. So once I've dabbed the rose water off, I then apply my serums. Now, ding, 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 side note. If you are an eye cream, this is also where you want to use your eye cream. Um, I use eye creams more in the winter, not so much in the summer, but tonight I'm going to put a little bit of Vaseline under my eyes because I want to show you how I use the Vaseline under my eyes with a prescription strength retinoid. So I will let that sit for a minute or two. And then I'll use my serums. And the serums that I'm using are Discoloration Defense, which has tranexamic acid, and tranexamic acid, again, another dropper. Why do you guys all want to be chemists? Okay, just go to a lab. Um, is a great product to help with melasma, and that's also when my pigmentation got worse. So I will focus it on the tops of my cheeks because it really got worse here with my son. Okay? I don't put this on my neck or chest because I don't have much pigmentation here. And then I use this one by Murad, which has 2% hydroquinone. Again, another controversial ingredient. I use the over-the-counter hydroquinone. Right, so the SkinCeuticals Discoloration Defense, uh -huh. not cruelty-free. 85 quid for an ounce, a one ounce serum. Um, I quite like a dropper. I like a dropper. I don't know why she's moaning about the dropper. I like a dropper because it's economical. It might be the Scottish in me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I think it sounds really good, this one. I really do, actually. Although it's not cruelty-free, there's a couple of things I like in this one that she's using. Um, she's, it's got transemic, transexamic acid. <laughs> transexamic acid. 
I got that prescribed to me orally for heavy periods and it worked. Just thought I'd add that in because that's what it does. You know, it's used to clot blood, okay? Um, but topically, actually does work by interrupting the pathways that that lead to pigmentation. So that's, I kept saying that about her pigmentation because I think I can see it. I can still see some up here actually on her. Um, but it really is, it really is great for that. So, and it's a pretty much a new found ingredient for skincare, I think. Transexamic acid, uh-huh. So it stops the pigment producing cells as well. And, you know, it stops the menylin from traveling up into the cells, into the upper layers of the skin. So it's got a couple of things it does, right? But it definitely is very good for pigmentation. And I think we'll see a lot more of that as an ingredient. I do. I wish I could say it properly. <laughs> but transexamic, transexamic, is that right? Mm -hmm. I wish I could ask Siri, but I won't do it just now. Uh -huh. So I think that is really interesting. It's also got niacinamide 5%, which is the superstar. Vitamin B3, oh, I love that um, niacinamide, that is brilliant and it's in this product. I'm really liking this product. I, I know it's not cruelty free, which always will always not sit right with me, 100%. Um, I wish it was cruelty free because I would definitely buy this myself. It's also got kojic acid in it. Not that I suffer from pigmentation, I just think the ingredients are really really good but also you know kojic acid um it's antioxidant it's skin brightener and it also prevents pigmentation so this is something i would you know quite like using in the summer uh -huh, or in the lead up to summer and you know niacinamide's so good you know anti-acne skin brightening humectant you name it niacinamide can do it just about so i do like it and i can see why she's she's using it I, i'm going to give this product a thumbs up uh-huh <laughs> i am one in the summer because it will make you more sun sensitive in the winter time i'll go ahead and use prescription strength hydroquinone because again i'm not scared of it do i use it all year round all the time no i take breaks so i use it for like a month on then i'll probably take you know a month off and vice versa depending on how my skin is reacting so learn your skin is the point of that so now that i have applied the serums and i already put my eye cream this is where it gets interessante i use retinoids so tretinoin 0.05% it's prescription okay so it's a few serums she likes <laughs> she likes a few serums um going back to she put the vaseline on her eyes i'm just going to say to you that i do like vaseline for different uses i do um but vaseline is an occlusive you know it it keeps the water in your skin so if you put vaseline onto this area it's going to retain the water that's already present in the skin and it's going to prevent the water loss coming so that that's good so it prevents this trans epidermal water loss and that's a good thing about vaseline um putting it on the eye area she's going to use the obviously the prescription retinoic acid i think she's going to put that on that that's what that snacks of so that that doesn't aggravate so she's and i think in this case she's using the vaseline definitely as a buffer Okay, I would definitely think she's using it as a buffer. Um, but be careful about Vaseline. Those of us with that are prone to milia, and I'm prone to a bit of milia, it can really block the skin as well. So that's the other thing about it. Okay, I am not sure, but she believes it. So I have to maybe think that she's right. That if you put Vaseline on your skin and then you put a product on top of it, the product's going to get absorbed. I wouldn't have thought it would have absorbed, you know, hand on heart, hand on heart. I don't think that what she puts on top of the Vaseline is going to be absorbed into the skin. I understand why she thinks that. No, I would like to speak to a cosmetic chemist and, you know, ask them, is this going to work? Because <laughs> I'm not sure that would work. She's using this Murad Rapid Age Spot and Pigment Lightening Serum, 75 quid for 30 mil. It is cruelty free. She's talked about the hydroquinone and this again, hydroquinone, I, I think this is another ingredient that you can only get in the States. I'm sure, pretty sure that it's banned again in EU because hydroquinone has a skin bleaching effect and that's why 
she's definitely paranoid about her pigmentation, isn't she? She's paranoid about it. So, and she's used prescription strength um, hydroquinone as well. You know, when the baby, your baby's born, if you've had mask, you know, this melasma going on, this pigmentation for all to do with the hormones, you've had your baby, it usually does then go away. You know, it does usually go away. So, you know, I'm just saying, I don't know what age her, her baby is, but 2% hydroquinone in this product. Um, just being careful about it. Again, it can really aggravate sensitive skin. It's got this niacinamide, which is my favourite, and vitamin C in this. So this is pretty good because of those two ingredients. And I think that's interesting. Niacinamide and vitamin C is like a double whammy to give you really younger looking, fresher skin. Uh -huh. So be looking for niacinamide and vitamin C. Um, looking for those together. That's like a, a power team, like a super, a super team to keep your skin really good, smoother, more radiant, even toned just saying so mm, this is another good serum it really is just a hydroquinone if you've got any sensitivity it's a no-no okay it's goodness she's using lots of nice interesting products with really interesting ingredients a little bit goes a very long way and this tiny little poop 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 ping, poop poop and then i have a tiny bit left i dab it under my eyes on top of the vaseline because the vaseline is going to act like a barrier to minimize how effective it's going to be under the eyes but it's not going to completely block it so it's going to help at least with the fine lines around the eyes do you need a special fancy eye cream no you don't hmm good i think this is really interesting now it's really getting i can i can really feel what she's doing it's almost as if she's putting on the serums before as buffers to the prescription tretinone, that's what that's like. So it's, I'm understanding her thought processes a little bit more now. She's got these couple of serums, putting these on. In fact, I think there was maybe maybe three um, that she's put on and then she's putting on the tretinone, the prescription strength on top. So she's, she's absolutely buffering the tretinone, the prescription tretinone, and that's really great. And I'm glad that she's done that. And I think it's really, really good that she's actually said, you've got to be careful with your neck because I have definitely seen people with damaged skin on their neck, really dry, dehydrated skin from using um, too strong product, too strong retinols on their neck. And you, your skin, you've got to watch that with the strong vitamin C's and strong acids using on the neck combined really really watch that and um, so i like how she's done this she's using the l'oreal revitalist night serum which is um got 3.3 percent pure retinol I, I quite like that um with this avain hydrans um, intense rehydrating serum so she's used she's mixed the two i like that that she's done that that she's mixed because i like doing that i like mixing two products together i do um, so I think I like how she's done that. Um, this one, the L'Oreal one, the Revitalist Derm Intensive Night Serum. So what can I say? It's got this denatured alcohol in it and it's the one, water first. Water is always usually first ingredient and then glycerine. That's quite common too. But the third ingredient is actually alcohol denatured. You know, that's not good. It's a third ingredient in the product. L'Oreal, for God's sake, what are you doing? You're a huge, 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 huge company. My goodness, do something about this. What there is in this, though, to compensate in a little bit, but it still doesn't make up, make up for it, is that there's definitely soya oil, soybean oil. So there's a lot of um, moisturising. There's sodium hyaluronate in this. And, you know, so there is ingredients that buffer it too and make it not so drying, but... L'Oreal, come on, you're a big company. Uh, get that and fix out the cruelty-free stuff, okay? So just saying, just saying. So I do understand why she's doing it. She's obviously very, very concerned about um, her pigmentation, really can, really about that. That's her whole thing. You know, everybody's got something about their skin. It's either lines, wrinkles, or you're prone to acne, or in this case, Shireen's really paranoid about her pigmentation. Because the rest of it looks great. Her skin does look really good. She looks good. She's not lined at all. I wonder what age she is. And if you know what age she is, put it in the comments. I'd love to find out. 
I would, because she looks great. She does. So here we go. No, but quarantine sucks. And if something's gonna give me a little bit of a way to dream, I'm doing it. And it's clear to pose <laughs> intensifying. I don't even know how which one is it. Which is this is the intensive fortifying emotion. To me, three, three big words is too much for me to handle. But it's an intensive fortifying emulsion. I like it because it's a very lightweight hydrating serum. That's not to say that I don't use this because I do use this one too. Um, but because I'm doing something fancy for you guys with a new PJ set, I'm using the Kid de Peau. But I will not use the Kid de Peau from here to here because I'm not wasting it. It's too expensive. So I use this at the very end. Yes, there's fragrance. Don't come after me. I am not scared of fragrance. Okay, when I develop that allergy and that problem, I will stop it then. Same, why am I planning my funeral before I die? Right? So don't be scared of fragrance. And that is it. And now I'm ready to go to bed. So did you brush your teeth? Because if you did, you can join me. You guys thought I was done? Nope. I jump into bed, do a pillow talk during for all of you guys. I pop in Allegra because my allergies are terrible. And then I have a little surprise. Oh, that was great. I really liked that. So this Clou de Peau Beauté Intensive Fortifying Emulsion, 180 quid. Did you hear that? <laughs> for a four ounce. Um, it's too expensive that for what it is, okay? This is like, I, I don't know what these companies think of. It's like creme de la mer, you know, again. I could slam that one again. I really could, I could. <laughs> you know, and speak to other, not just me. I'm an esthetician, but there's lots of people out there in my business who know about creme de la mer and how overpriced that stuff is. And this is the same, and they seem to be, I don't know, these companies, they copy one another, and is it a French thing? Because it's French, I can charge more. Who knows? But I've looked at this again, and this is a glorified moisturiser. Uh -huh. There's nothing special about this. Um, there really isn't. I've looked at it. It's got fragrance in it, and, you know, here's the thing, right? She says she can tolerate fragrance or perfume and that's fine. It doesn't bother Shireen. It doesn't bother Shireen. But it is known 100% for anyone with a sensitive skin. Steer clear of things with perfume in them. Steer clear of it. Always look where the perfume is in the, in the actual list of ingredients as well. You know, be careful about that. If it's right down at the bottom and there's a 60 odd, and there's a lot of ingredients in this one, I have to tell you. I haven't counted this one, not like me, because <laughs> I like to count how many ingredients are in it. But there is a couple of things in here. There's perfume, alcohol, like bad alcohol. Um, and there's, well, there's hyaluronic acid, I like that. And there's olive leaf extract, I like that. Um, there's a couple of essential oils which I'm not keen on but the top lot here the top ingredients is all about humectant emollient emollient oil emollient emollient skin softener hydrating so the most of the top ingredients are just moisturizing nothing special in the top li list at all and there is fancy um extracts in this there's lavender oil which some people will go don't, not sure and there's vitamin E in it it's right at the practically at the bottom there's also this silk um, which I think is funny because Cassandra Banks has mentioned this before C Cassandra Banks is an amazing youtuber on skincare you know check out I'll put a link to her stuff below she is really got it Cassandra if you ever watch this I love you <laughs> but she mentions that to get this silk extract in these ingredients they have to boil silkworms for that mmm <sighs> And I don't like the sound of that. I don't. I don't like the sound of that. Anyway, it's very expensive and you don't need to pay 180 quid for a, a moisturiser. You don't. You really don't. So I hope that was fun for you. It was certainly fun for me. I thought that she really did know her skin and I think that is what I want to get from this. That you really need to know your skin, what it's like. Really understand the products and ingredients that help your skin. If you do that, fantastic. I love it. So I hope that was interesting. I hope you got something from it. Please, if you've got any skincare questions that you need answers to, feel free to email me at info at jlformulations.com. I am here to help you. Anything to do with your skin, I'm here to give you some advice. Would love to do that. Okay, but please put comments in below. Like that as well. And take care and have a great week. Look after yourself. Bye.